Today on Straight Talk Africa, until recently, Zambia was considered one of the beacons of hope for African democracy. Observers say that reputation is being threatened. This because opposition leader Kainde Ichirema is in jail charged with treason. Zambian action groups say the charges are politically motivated. Ichirema's party does not recognize the legitimacy of the last vote or the presidency of Edgar Lungu. That's coming up next right here on Straight Talk Africa. Hello, welcome to Straight Talk Africa, live from the Voice of America studios here in Washington. I am Shaka Sali. And hello to all our viewers and listeners on the continent and elsewhere. I'm Ayan Bior, your social media reporter. Today, it's a discussion on the trials and tribulations of challenges of democracy in Zambia. And coming up later, you, our audience, has weighed in on our topic through emails, Facebook, and Twitter comments. And we'll reveal some of them ahead on Straight Talk Africa. Zambia has managed to avoid the war and upheaval that's marred many of its neighbors' post-colonial history. My very colleague Paul Cisco says the dutiful nation's well-earned reputation for political stability is under threat. Zambia. Even saying the word is a multi-sensory experience. It somehow captures something of the essence of this special place in the warm heart of Southern Africa. If only more of that Zambia was reflected in its politics. A Zambian court this week refused to drop treason charges against Hakiende Ichilema. The main opposition leader allegedly blocked Zambian President Edgar Lugu's motorcade in April. Ichilema is the leader of the United Party for National Development. The UPND says it doesn't recognize President Edgar Lungu as Zambia's legitimate president because it believes last year's elections were fraudulent. The court documents read differently, saying that Mr. Ichilema, while acting together with other persons unknown, did endeavor to overthrow, by unlawful means, the government of Edgar Lungu. His lawyers wanted the treason charge thrown out, in part for lack of details regarding the charge. Ichilema and five aides appeared in court April 18th. The opposition leader is shown here leaving the courthouse and being returned to jail. Many Zimbabweans are calling for his release. Government spokespersons say President Lungu's position remains the same. The president respects the due process of law, and his intervention in any court matter is only possible once the due process of law is complete, they say. If convicted of treason, Ichilema faces a minimum jail term of 15 years. The maximum sentence is the death penalty. Jack Wimbu says his client has always known that President Luglu, who is also the Patriotic Front Party leader, wanted to charge him with a non-bailable offense, so he's not shocked. As the situation is now, I'm not able to make any comment. We have made an application before the court pertaining to the validity of the charge, which we have challenged, and the court will be making a decision on it. I can't go further than that. The opposition candidate is frequently in and out of police detention. The charges were strongly condemned by the non-government organization Coordinating Council. That's an umbrella body of Zambian action groups. Zambia is rapidly becoming one of the world's most welcoming tourist destinations with its spectacular wildlife, Victoria Falls, and until recently, political stability. Since the 2016 August vote, Ichilema and the UPND have launched several unsuccessful legal bids challenging President Lungu's victory. The United Nations says Zambia has one of the world's fastest growing populations, and its current population of 13 million people is expected to triple by 2050. Despite years of some economic growth and massive Chinese investment in Zambia, the lives of most Zambians have not significantly improved for decades and two-thirds of Zambians are still living in poverty. Paul Sisko, VOA News, Washington. Thanks, Paul Sisko, for that report. Uh, joining us here in our Washington studio is Clarissa Mwampa Kayosa, a Zambian human rights and development consultant here in Washington, D.C. And my colleague, Peter Kelote, host of VOA Nightline Africa radio program. 
Well, I have to say, Clarissa and Peter, that I'm profoundly honored and exceedingly humbled to have the opportunity to host the two of you on Straight Talk Africa. Thank, Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. You're most welcome. And Father Frank Boalia, Deputy Spokesman of the ruling Patriotic Front Party, joins us live via telephone link up from the Zambian capital, Lusaka. Also joining us from Lusaka is Dr. Sishua. Sishua, a Zambian political commentator. Gentlemen, it's a pleasure to host you on Straight Talk Africa for the first time. And thank you. Thank you very much, Sadi. You're most welcome, sir. Later in the thank you so much, Jaka. Thank you. Later in the program, we'll give you, the audience, a chance to call and talk with our guests. The number to call is 202-619-3111. Yes, country code is one. Let me come to you immediately, Clarissa. You come from a very beautiful country. Well, thank you very much. It has been incredibly stable for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. What happened? Well, that's what we all want to find out. You know, Zambia has been a very peaceful country. Um, Zambians are very peaceful people. Um, things just started changing. The last election, there was a lot of chaos. And that is not traditional Zambia. So these are the things that we want to find out. We do not know what has been happening to cause that kind of boldness for people to behave the way they are behaving. So a lot has been going on in Zambia and um, yeah, that's what we want to find out. My colleague, uh, Peter, I probably cannot think of any other reporter, frankly, that uh, has uh, covered Zambia very, very closely like you. When you talk to those various individuals, what do you learn from that? Why are we talking about this today for a country, frankly, that has had the reputation of being one of the beacons of hope for African democracy? Shaka, unanimously, when I have spoken to some of these political uh, people in Zambia, they trace the problem right down to when former or deceased President Michael Sata died and there was a by-election. And... Edgar Chagualungu, then the defense minister, was able to win by a slim margin. Haka Inde Ichilema, the UPND leader, felt he was cheated at that time. So he felt he had the chance to defeat uh, Edgar Lungu in the main election after uh, um, Edgar Lungu finished the term of the deceased president, Michael Sata. So once it came to the last year's election and he also lost by a slim margin, he felt there were some way that the Electoral Commission, you know, fiddled with some of the figures that allowed Edgar Lungu to win. So that is where the problem lied, because after Zambia, which boasts of being the bastion of peace and stability in the southern African region, for over 20 people to be reported to have died out of clashes between supporters of the main opposition party, UPND, and the Patriotic Front, is unheard of. So that is where they trace the problem from Shaka. Now, I know that uh, you interviewed uh, a former chairperson of the Zambian Electoral Commission, and I also had uh, the opportunity to do so. And that was a widely respected lady by Irene Mambilima. Mm -hmm. Justice Irene Mambilima, yes. And she was moved to the Supreme Court. Yes, she was. And then stuff happened. Absolutely. Why? Well, Opposition supporters think that there were political calculations by the PF to take her away from there because she is seen as unbiased, she is strict, she up, upholds the true nature of ensuring an independent electoral commission. And that is why they thought that she was moved away to pave way for people who otherwise might be easily influenced. Of course, I spoke with Prisla Isaac, who is the director of elections at the Electoral Commission, who sharply denies that, and that they did everything according to the book, and that the elections that were held were credible, transparent, free, and fair. Of course, the UPND denies that, too. Obviously, uh, Madame was replaced by someone who used to be her deputy, mm -hmm. Esau Chulu. Esau Chulu, yes. What do you say 
of him? Well, I tried several times to speak with him. Uh, however, his, you know, he said his schedule was a little tight. So I will either speak with the spokesman of the Electoral Commission or go straight to the Director of Elections, uh, in this case, uh, Prisla Isaac, to tell me what the processes were. Um, what really jogged my memory was the fact that the ballot papers, which usually were printed in South Africa for the first time, seem to have switched to be printed somewhere in the Middle East, in Dubai. And in Dubai to be specific. And the UPND says this was a clear indication that something was amiss because a similar thing happened in the Ugandan election where the ballot papers were printed there and, you know, things happened and President Museveni won. So they drew conclusion that the Electoral Commission, for want of a better word, wanted to rig the election in favor of the Patriotic Front uh, president, in this case, President Edgar Chagualungu. I see. Uh, Father uh, Frank Boadia. Yes, please. Why are we talking about this now? Uh, because, let's face it, uh, you know as well as I do that uh, your country, frankly, has had uh, a very distinguished record for being a beacon, if not one of the beacons of hope for African democracy. We are talking about this because the world wants Zambia to continue being a beacon of peace, to continue being an example of true democracy, not only in Africa, but in the world at large. That's the reason why we are talking about this. Does this therefore mean that Zambia has lost it, that Zambia has stopped to respect the tenets of democracy, multi-party democracy? Not at all. It's a question of the world being concerned because they want Zambia to continue with the reputation that it has earned for itself. And what we can assure uh, the world as the governing party in Zambia is that President Ediga Chagwalungu is a Democrat. He will not go back on that. He's going to continue upholding democracy. He will continue to respect the opposition. He's a man, as a matter of fact, who is even criticized for being too tolerant. He's a man that is being criticized by some people for being a good man. That is uh, Mr. Ediga Chagwalungu for you. I see, So we are I talking see. about this issue not because Zambia is losing those credentials, no, but because the world wants Zambia not to lose these credentials and we as governing party can assure the world that it will not happen. Very interesting. Uh, what about you, Dr. Sishua Sishua. What is your take on this? Well, I think that uh, we, if we agree that Zambia was the beacon of peace and democracy, uh, the very fact that we are talking about uh, the country in a, in a different context now suggests that there has been um, some a departure uh, from the tenets of democracy uh, for which the country was previously known. Um, and I think that to, with reference to the, uh, the current, um, you know, crisis, the uh, problem, in my view, stems from um, elections uh, which were held last year, which uh, were seen uh, by the opposition and many uh, stakeholders as far from uh, perfect. Uh, this is a country, you know, you would recall where we have had two turnovers of power. In 1991, when President Kaunda uh, lost power to an opposition party after ha having been in power for 27 years, and in 2011, uh, when the current party, the Party of the Front, defeated the former governing party, the MMD. Um, so we, we had this tradition where uh, elections are largely transparent, free and fair, um, and the 2016 election were not uh, um, were far from uh, the previous elections in terms of uh, transparency and fairness. So uh, the, the consequence of that is that you have a government uh, in place that lacks legitimacy uh, because the, of the manner in which those elections were held. And the, the long process of that is what has brought us to where we are today, uh, particularly to this topic. Who is uh, the primary stakeholder in Zambia? 
Is it the Zambian people or the development partners? Well, it's, it's, it's the Zambian people. Uh, the development partners can only come in to help what the Zambian themselves have decided uh, they want uh, for their country. So the primary stakeholders in this case are Zambians themselves. Thank you very much. Uh, now we will pause for a short break and we want to remind you that Straight Talk Africa is now streaming on Facebook. Just enter the keyword Straight Talk Africa and watch our show live and don't forget to share it with your friends. Also we are on Twitter, follow us at VOA Shaka. That's VOA Shaka and join in today's discussion with your questions and comments. Don't forget to use the hashtag VOA Zambia. We'll be right back with you, so please don't go away. We are able to touch on things that are important to people on an everyday basis. We hope that our viewers are getting inspired when they watch our show. They're getting a view of the world from a different perspective, things that perhaps are not in their immediate vicinity. Today, I could put in on the show something that is a little different, a little unique, and this gives me that uh, you know, inspiration to come to work. This is Straight Talk Africa on The Voice of America. What is your opinion about today's topic? Call us at 202-619-3111. U.S. country code 1. When you call, remember the following. Ask only one question. Keep your comment brief and turn down the volume on your radio or television. Now let's return to Straight Talk Africa. Thank you very much, uh, Esther Gizu Yuat, and of course this is Straight Talk Africa coming to you live from Washington. Let me come to you again, uh, uh, Kralisa. Um, we do know that uh, the Zambian major opposition leader, uh, Hakainde Hichilema, uh, is in jail. He's also been charged with uh, treason, but of course uh, the opposition and a lot of observers say, no, these are basically politically motivated charges. Mm -hmm. How do you respond to that? I think they are politically motivated, really. Why would they be politically motivated uh, when it is said he had the dubious privilege of driving on a freeway that was at the same time intended to be used by His Excellency the President? First of all, I don't believe that's a treasonable charge. I think that's a highway offense. And maybe, um, you know, in, in the U.S. it would be road rage when you look at it in a different level. Mm -hmm. But I, I believe it's much more politically motivated because um, this may not be founded, but I believe that they had requested air passage initially to travel to the ceremony that was taking place in Limulunga, in the western part of Zambia, and they were denied that because um, the president was using the airspace at the same time. So they decided to drive since they couldn't fly at the same time. And to their amazement, at a certain point, um, a motorcade was drive coming behind them and um, well I'm sure they did know uh, and they were expected to move which I believe they should have given way but they didn't and that became an issue later on and when they went to the ceremony I believe there was a lot of um, support from the people that were at the ceremony because I believe most of them were U UPND supporters. So when the um, um, HH, as he's known in Zambia, left, a lot of those supporters left. So there were not many people left during the ceremony. So I believe all of those things were building up. And I think the most important one of all is because Hakainde Hichilema has not recognized the, president, um, the presidency of um, the current president, Edgar Chagualungu. So I believe all of those things have built up to what has become the case right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's why I believe it's all politically motivated. Very interesting. Uh, Peter, again, you obviously have been uh, covering and monitoring the Zambian situation very, very closely. Uh, was he the only passenger 
uh, driving on that highway, it seems to me that uh, I have seen reports suggesting, in fact, that there were many, many others. It was a convoy. When I spoke with Jack Mwimbu, his personal, uh, not his personal, but his defense attorney, and who is a leading member of the legal team of the UPND, he says that it was a convoy of at least 100 cars, his words, not mine. So he's, he was surprised that they would charge, they would single him out and a few others uh, to charge them with treason. But he said at no point in time was the president's life in danger of which will attract that charge of treason. And he vehemently denied that Haka Hichelema wanted to uh, put the president's life in danger. I spoke with Charles Kakuma, the spokesman of the party, who said that President Lungu even attempted to wave at Haka Hichelema during that period. So it, it was surprising that they would turn around and charge him. This was because uh, the press secretary of the president had gone on the air and said that the police should charge Haka Inde Chalama with treason. And then the police went ahead to charge him. So they said, if you follow the chronology of events, one, uh, the attorney says, the government does not have any empirical evidence to charge Haka Inde Chalama of putting the president's life in danger. That is why they say that these charges were politically motivated. Of course, the ruling party denies that. Very interesting. Uh, uh, Father Boalia? Yes, please. I hope you have been uh, listening. Uh, what about you? Uh, do you have any problem uh, with those people who say that these charges against uh, Hakainde Ichilema may in fact be politically motivated? Yeah, maybe before I speak about that, allow me to say that uh, we are presuming on this program that the people who are commenting on the Zambian situation are being objective and honest, but it's not true. Some of the things that are being said on the program are not true, and people are not being objective. For instance, it is not true that when Mr. Akainde Ichlema left the ceremony, uh, the Kumboka ceremony, there were a few people that remained behind. It's not true, and we need to be honest with, uh, with one another here. It is also not true, as Dr. Sishua uh, said, that uh, Zambian elections were deemed not free and fair by many uh, stakeholders. That is not true. The majority, if not all the stakeholders that are monitored the election, including, including church mother bodies and so on, international organizations, uh, including regional bodies, all of them without exception, all of them without exception, describe the Zambian election as free and fair and credible. The fact that Mr. Akainde Ichilema has refused to accept the outcome is of no surprise to Zambians because he said it before a single ballot was cast. Before the election, he had said he was not going to accept the outcome. Now, talking about his, uh, his arrest, PF did not arrest the man, it's the police. And there's a clear distinction in Zambia between the state and the governing party. So on our part, as a patriotic front, we cannot speak about his arrest, the merits and the merits of it. That is for the police. But what we do know is that Mr. Kainde Itlema was not sleeping in his house and then visited by the police, accused of having been in Mongo, accused of having refused to give way to the presidential motorcade. That we know is not true. And it is very uh, surprising and almost laughable on the fact that somebody can describe what happened in Mongo if it happened in America as a road rage. No, 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 no. You can't block the American president uh, on a highway and that simply considered as a road rage. No, no, no. I think we need to be honest with one another here. So the police have arrested uh, the man. They have charged him with a number of offenses. We also read about these offenses in the media when the police issue a statement. And therefore, it is not for us to say whether indeed what he uh, did amounts to uh, a treason, whether his announcement that he would soon go to State House, knowing too well that under the Zambian constitution, the current constitution, amended constitution, yeah. there's no way somebody who is not president in this country can claim that they are going to soon become president. Because if Miss President Lungu died, the vice president will take over. If the vice president uh, died, 
the cabinet will have to sit and choose from among themselves somebody who would become president. Father Boadi, I think uh, your point uh, is well made, uh, is well, it's taken care of. Um, what about you, um, Dr. Sishua? Sishua, we have heard, of course, uh, uh, people uh, approaching or appealing to the president uh, to interfere and uh, uh, figure out a way of uh, uh, perhaps making uh, sure that uh, Hichilema is out of jail. And the president has uh, said uh, that, you know what, I cannot interfere because uh, here in Zambia, such is an issue that should be sorted out by the courts. You are a Zambian, uh, you are a political observer. To what extent would you say, for example, that uh, the Zambian judiciary is an independent, impartial umpire? Do you have the separation of the ruling party in Zambia today from the state? Or are they, as some people have suggested, are they fused? together, in which case, frankly, uh, the executive perhaps influences what happens in the judiciary. Well, public confidence in the judiciary, um, I think, over the recent past, has plummeted uh, in part because of the poor handling of the election petition uh, brought by the opposition the election. Uh, the Constitutional Court, which had demanded um, uh, to hear uh, the election petition, um, um, an elected presidential candidate um, did not see um, here the matter, the, the case uh, for uh, hearing it uh, on taken currency by saying that the, the timing, the 14 days uh, in which the, uh, the case is to be decided had lapsed. Um, and the, that the decision did not sit well with many Zambians. Uh, but but the, the spokesperson of the president, uh, president himself, appeared on national television that time back, suggesting that the president uh, controls the three branches of government, parliament, executive, and judiciary. Uh, and he, he made these remarks in the aftermath of a few judgments which had not gone against, uh, which had gone against the executive, warning judges, uh, judiciary in general, that the, uh, drastic judicial reforms will be introduced uh, if the judges continue to involve themselves in politics. A euphemism which many saw as uh, saying that the continue ruling against the, uh, the ruling party or the government, then he will introduce this drastic reform. So when you when you consider the poor handling of the petition, the statements from uh, uh, the ruling political elite, for example, including the spokesperson of the president, you know, comments like those consequently undermine the credibility of the judiciary. And many people um, in the country right now think that the judiciary is not interested. Very interesting. You are tuned in to Straight Talk Africa. We'll have more of our discussion in a moment, including our social media segment. So please, don't go away. And not just the next generation of African leaders, they are today's leaders. And this is the time to invest in them. Today, not tomorrow. So let's connect. Let's engage with each other on issues that will transform our societies. Innovation, leadership, entrepreneurship, things that you're doing to move the continent forward to make you the greatest generation that Africa has known. It's up front every Wednesday, 1730 UTC, right here on The Voice of America. This is Straight Talk Africa on The Voice of America. Call us now with your questions and comments. The number is 202-619-3111 and the U.S. country code is 1. Call us direct and we'll call you right back. Remember to turn down the volume on your radio or television and keep your comments brief. Now back to Straight Talk Africa. Thank you very much, Esther Gidi Ewart, and welcome back to Straight Talk Africa, live from Washington. It's time to bring in my colleague and social media reporter, Ian Bior. Take it away, Ian. 
Thanks, Shaka. Zambia's main opposition party, the United Party for National Development, led by Hakainde Hichelema, has accused the government of President Edgar Lungu of trying to frame it for arson. Hakainde has been arrested and charged with treason, but his party says this is an excuse for greater political suppression. Well, this leads us to our question of the week, which asks, do you feel that opposition leader Hakainde Hichelema is being treated fairly by the Zambian government? Well, before we begin, I'd like to thank all of you for using our social media platforms to communicate with us. And let's go straight to a tweet from Prince Habat Nkula from Uganda. He writes, in my opinion, no. The aim of every government is to remain in power. But then in Africa, it's at every cost possible. Very interesting. We have another tweet from Mwanda Hitengwa from Zambia, who says, my freedom is my right. My rights are my freedom. Our freedom is our right. Our rights is our freedom. Hakainde Hichelema, he ends his tweet using the hashtag FreeHH. Of course, HH is in reference to Hakainde Hichelema. Well, now to a comment from our comment of the week from Facebook fan Nadwiza Chilambwe from Kenya, who writes, three simple things. Three simple things here, excuse me. One, Hakainde Hichelema doesn't accept that there is a president in Zambia. Two, his actions in Mongu were treasonous and very much in line with his pompous stance that Edgar Lungu is not the president. And three, when the police went to arrest him, he evaded them and hid in a pre-designed bunker. Force was necessary to smoke him out, as is done with any fleeing suspect. It's very interesting. Now let's go to another comment from Facebook fan Michael Chipo from Zambia, who writes... Zambia is by all logical descriptions not now a flawed democracy. Hichelema is a victim of state oppression. He was framed just so he could be forced to drop his pursuit of justice in regards to the presidential election petition and the right to be heard. And our last Facebook comment comes from Matthews Kalengo of Zambia who writes, absolutely yes, I believe Hichelema is being treated fairly. He thinks because he has a large following in three provinces out of ten, he can do anything, and the people will rise to defend me, to defend him. He is always banking on violence as a refuge for his bad deeds. He thinks he is untouchable simply because he is a big opposition leader. The laws must apply to everyone. Very interesting. Now, a reminder that we appreciate all the audience feedback, so please keep them coming. And if you're a new fan, drop us a line at africatv at voanews.com. Once again, our email address is africatv at voanews.com, or post your comment on our Facebook page. Enter the keywords Straight Talk Africa. Interact with our show as it's streaming live. Be sure to visit us online at voaafrica.com, or you can join our YouTube channel. Sign up to VOA TV to Africa and follow us on Twitter at VOA Shaka. A reminder that the show is streaming live every Wednesday. Go to VOA Straight Talk Africa TV program page on our website or simply watch us live on your mobile device. Just download the VOA mobile app. Now let's take a look at what's on tap for next week's program. On the next Straight Talk Africa, the future of Sub-Saharan Africa's development lies in the hands of its youth. In her new book, Ambassador Robin Renee Sanders says growth and progress is being driven by small and medium-sized enterprises. That's on the next Straight Talk Africa. Well, that's all for today's social media segment. Shaka, you and the guests have a lot of social media comments to discuss. Back to you. Thank you very much, Ian, for sharing some social media reaction with us. And welcome back uh, to the trials and tribulations of democracy in Zambia. Our distinguished guests are Clarissa Mwampa Kayosa, human rights and development consultant, my colleague Peter Kelote, host of VOA Nightline Africa program, and Father Frank Boalia, deputy spokesman, the ruling Patriotic Front Party, and also, uh, we're joined by Dr. Sishua, Sishua, a Zambian political commentator from the Zambian capital, Lusaka. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have to say, as I said before, profoundly honored and exceedingly humbled to have the four of you 
on Straight Talk Africa. Thank you, Shaka. Thank you. You're most welcome. Your reaction to some aspects of the social media reaction? I just want to respond to the one that talked about him um, hiding in his bunk and um, I will not address the pompous part because I do not know him personally. But from history, what I have known is every time Hakainde Hichilema has been summoned by the police, he has gone. So this one was very different. I do not know why he was approached at night, the lights at his, house. at his home, and they turned off the power in the area, and they, um, they sprayed tear gas in the place. I think he did the right thing to stay in hiding until... They actually sprayed tear gas? They did. Do you have any incontrovertible evidence of that? Not yes. to lie able to falter. Well, I mean, his wife has spoken, and the media has covered it as well. The, the print media has covered it. And um, he came out later the following morning when other people were gathered there. I think it was only for his safety that he came out because mm. apparently his whole house was um, um, destroyed. A lot was done to his home. So if he had come out at night, heaven knows what would have happened to him. Interesting. Yes. Peter, mm -hmm. if what Clarissa is saying is true, why, frankly, uh, would a patriotic Zambian, a tax-paying Zambian, a man that has companies that employ a lot of people and all that kind of stuff, a man, in fact, who could be president of Zambia, why would he be treated as if he was a terrorist? Well, um, the police came out saying that they treated him fairly and that he resisted arrest. And when you resist arrest, uh, the law provides for the police to use necessary force uh, to enforce the law. And that all these accusations against the police are unfounded uh, and they did everything by the book. However, the Zambian Conference of Catholic Bishops, led by Telis for Impundu, came out and said that the police did not handle the matter correctly and that they should have handled him more humanely. They possibly could have invited him to the police for discussion. But then others are saying that the charges uh, were serious and that this is a serious matter. He can't just be treated like an ordinary criminal and that the allegations were that he put the president's life in danger. As such, the enforcement of the law has to uh, be enforced. However, the bishop said one thing, and I would want to quote uh, without uh, any equivocation. He said, the bishop said, Zambia is now all except in designation a dictatorship. They said there are signs that shows that Zambia is gradually tilting towards a dictatorship. The Patriotic Front denies that, and, and they have said that uh, President Edgar Chagualungu, as well as the Patriotic Front, respect the right of everybody to speak. Uh, as guaranteed in the Constitution, they said. You've spoken to some uh, senior government officials, including the president's spokesperson. Right. What did he say when you put the question to him? Well, he said that they stand by um, what the police uh, did and that the, what the police did was in accordance with what is required in Zambian law and that when you resist arrest to the police, the police has to use they have to use necessary force to bring you to book. And that is what is done. And that President Lungu will not intervene in the legal process because there's a separation of the various arms of government and that the law should take its course. Uh, once that is done uh, and there's transparency uh, and everything else, uh, you know, if he's free, he can go. If not, then he faces the full rigors of the law. Father Buaria? Yes, please. I know that uh, people are entitled to their different uh, opinions, but certainly not to their different sets of facts. What is your reaction to what you just heard? They come again? I said that I know that people are entitled to different opinions. They're different their opinion. opinions. Yes. But certainly not to their different sets of facts. No, no. So, 
your reaction? Because earlier you said uh, that... Uh, talking about the letter, talking about the letter of Archbishop Mpundu, and even as I comment on that, people shouldn't forget that I'm a bona fide priest. Some people may be surprised that I'm saying I'm a bona fide uh, Catholic priest, having announced that I had left the ministry. What I mean is that according to canon law, I was validly ordained, and therefore that ordination cannot be withdrawn. So I'm speaking with that background, knowing about the practices of the Roman Catholic Church and what is prescribed in canon law. When Archbishop Mpundu spoke, he was not speaking on behalf of Catholics in Zambia. He was speaking to Catholics and to people of goodwill. That being the case, what he says is not supposed to be taken as gospel truth. It's up to the people to whom he's speaking, Catholics and people of goodwill, to agree or disagree with him. But we give our leaders, church leaders, a lot of respect that even when what they say is not based on accurate analysis of what is going on, we respect what they say. We respect our opinion. And the reaction of government was that government was open to dialogue. But as many people have agreed with the police, when somebody commits an offense, which is serious, the police move there and then to go and arrest the person. But a lot of um, uh, you know, issues have been blown out of context and proportion in terms of what happened when they went to arrest him. The man hid in a bunker, as many people have said. And the police needed to get him because they wanted to arrest him. What his people have been saying is that he didn't know what came to the gate, and that is the reason why he refused to cooperate. But that is not the truth. The truth is that he didn't want to get himself arrested and he hid in the bunker. I also need to emphasize that the fact that one opposition leader in Zambia has been arrested and there is cause for that arrest has not eroded our democratic credentials. And in this country, the tension that they are talking about out there is not being felt. The situation in Zambia is not that commuter transport has been grounded. The situation is not that people are withdrawing huge amounts of money to buy food, to stockpile, because they don't know what is going to happen tomorrow. Not at all. Much to the contrary of UPND supporters who thought that the country would uh, you know, go up in flames when their leader is arrested and the government would release uh, him because of that. That is not what is happening. Zambia continues to be stable. People continue to go about their business as usual. As a matter of fact, the lawyers are meeting this time around, and they applied that all the cases in court requiring the presence of lawyers should be adjourned. And I want to believe Mr. Akainde Hitchlemer's case also has been further adjourned, keeping him in, 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 uh, behind bars a further. Dr. Sishua Sishua. Dr. Sishua Sishua, are you there? Are you there, Dr. Sishua Sishua? Uh, maybe as you were trying to get him, can I make one small point, please? No, sir. No, sir. Uh, Dr. Sishua Sishua, yeah. are you there? Well, I'm afraid that uh, we seem to have lost uh, Dr. Sishua Sishua. Uh, I would appeal to um, our producers, perhaps, uh, to try and uh, see whether they can raise him again. Uh, let me come to you, uh, Clarissa. Uh, if you were to talk to me from uh, the deepest, better part of the bottom uh, and the soul of your Zambian heart, um, is there any particular reason, for example, why incumbent President Lungu really uh, would not uh, uh, borrow a leaf uh, from the examples of great role models within Zambia. We're talking about uh, founding president, Dr. David Kenneth Kaunda, a man who had been at the, polit you know, at the political helm of Zambia for 27 years, and back in 1991, he loses an election and concedes defeat with grace. And then you have another gentleman, uh, Rupia Banda, an incumbent president conceding defeat in 2011, honestly, when in fact he could have taken advantage of incumbent 
and the use of the institutions, for example, of violence to retain power. You hmm. see, as, um, as a Zambian, and I had said, as I had said earlier, Zambia has been a very, very peaceful nation. And there is nothing wrong with the current president, you know, going back to the ones that were there before him to get counsel. He may be doing it. I do not know that. But the way things are right now is not the Zambia that I want to live in, is not the Zambia that I want to leave for my children. So what is going on right now in the country is very disheartening. You see, we have never seen this kind of turmoil in the nation, people dying during elections, closing down of media um, offices, you know, intimidation during um, elections. It's, it's just not a good situation right now to be in Zambia. And I, there are so many people he could borrow a leaf from. There's nothing wrong with that. For example? I mean, he could, like you said, he could talk to um, KK. The way KK handled things, we never, I never, I had best friends growing up. I didn't know what tribe they were. But now it's important to know what tribe a person is. Really? Well, I mean, not in that sense, but people know the Bembas, the Tongas, the this, the that. So th this is not something we grew up with. Given the manner in which your country, under founding president, uh, Kaunda, uh, reached out, frankly, to help and liberate its sisters and brothers from the rest of Southern Africa. How can you talk about tribes? Mm -hmm. It seems to me there is only one tribe, human tribe, exactly. perhaps the African tribe. Exactly. There's only one tribe, and that's the African mm -hmm. tribe. And um, Kaunda's One Zambia, One Nation uh, slogan is what kept us together as one. And the man, in fact, who happened to be uh, a protege mm -hmm. of Ghanaian founding president, the Osajefo, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Dr. So, Kwame Nkrumah, a man from Crowfield, and I have traveled there with his daughter, Samia. It is so far away from the capital, Accra. If you looked at the social conditions, frankly, you would never think that this kid from Crowfield would actually have an African vision would be the man that would want to liberate Africa. You think he would simply say, I have killed my beast. Mm -hmm. I can now start eating the meat. Mm -hmm. You see, as really, as a Zambian, as a peace-loving Zambian, I, it doesn't matter to me who is in power, what tribe they are, which part of the country they come from. I just want someone who, ha who, who, who has a sense of justice for all, someone who cares for everybody, I don't vote based on where a person comes from. As you said, I vote based on the human na um, you know, tribe. That's what's important at the end of the day. Very interesting. Uh, uh, Peter, again, uh, I'm reminded that uh, there's no democracy in Studio 52. I understand. Uh, that I have to go. A reminder that you are tuned into Straight Talk Africa. If you wish to participate in our discussion, please call us at 202-619-3111. This country code is one. We'll continue our discussion in a moment, so please, don't go away. The lyrics could be French, English, Portuguese, Bantu, Arabic. It is the beat. The African beat that counts. The beat does all the translations. It cuts across all languages and gives us the understanding that this is the African beat. It is so distinct and adhesive. It binds us together. African Beat on the Voice of America. For more information, visit our website at www.voanews.com slash African Beat. If you like today's show, please write and tell us what you think or give us some suggestions. Be sure to tell us what station you're tuned into. Our address, Straight Talk Africa, Voice of America. 330 Independence Avenue Southwest, Washington, D.C., 20237 USA. Or send us an email at africatv at voanews.com. Log on to our website at voaafrica.com. Or post your comments on Facebook. Keywords, Straight Talk Africa.
Thank you very much, Estegidi. You were, and of course, this is Straight Talk Africa coming to you live from Washington. Again, let me come to you, Peter. You obviously have uh, um, touched base with a lot, a lot of newsmakers uh, in as far as uh, the Republic of Zambia is concerned. Uh, from your interactions, what have you learned, at least in terms of uh, uh, what they suggest would frankly be uh, the appropriate way forward? Well, um, they talked about easing social political tension through dialogue. They think dialogue and reconciliation are the best steps to take to reconcile the people, ease tension, and ensure the one Zambia mantra that President, uh, President Edgar Lungu as is espousing will be rationalized. However, the stumbling block is President Lungu came out with a statement saying that all those people who are urging him to ensure a dialogue between him and other opposition parties should also encourage the opposition parties to recognize him as the legitimate president first before he engages them in dialogue. That is the precondition that is uh, affecting or is hindering talks at the moment because the UPND has vowed not to accept him as the legitimate president until its case in court is, you know, is resolved, without which they will still not recognize him. As long as it's in court, they will not recognize him, and that is the stumbling block right now because both are staying at their corners unwilling to give an inch to allow for dialogue to proceed. Very interesting. Uh, uh, Father Boadia? Father Boadia, can you hear me? What about Dr. Sishua Sishua? All lines are down. Let me come back to, uh, you know, the studio. Um, you heard, of course, uh, what Peter um, has said. Uh, what do you think about that? Uh, is it possible, for example, for HH uh, to recognize uh, uh, Edgar Lunga's presidency, perhaps, in fact, without uh, uh, some kind of election auditing? We are talking about uh, the last year's election. I believe um, they should be given their day in court. And until that happens, I don't think they're going to concede to any um, uh, to um, Edgar Lungu's winning of the presidency. But which courts are you talking about? Because you heard, of course, Dr. Sishua Sishua saying that uh, uh, public opinion uh, mm -hmm. somehow believes that uh, the judicial system of Zambia is not independent. That's, that's true. That's, I heard him say that. But I still believe that's the only way. If they're given their day in court, then, then at least, you know, they, they'll, they'll, they'll concede to the fact that the election was lost and PF won the elections. And uh, it's unfortunate that the judiciary system has also been corrupted in a way because when that um, breaks down, then I guess the rule of law now becomes an issue in any nation. So I really, going back to your question, I do not see them accepting the presidency without that. Now, you know as well as I do, Peter, that uh, the six judges that form the uh, Constitutional Court were actually appointed by incumbent President Lungu against a lot of presses. In fact, uh, some of his critics, in fact, suggest that uh, even some of the judges, frankly, uh, do not probably measure up. They probably shouldn't, in fact, have been members of the court. Um, so where do we go from here? Well, it's a stalemate. You have the issue, of course, of uh, the ballot papers mm -hmm. being uh, uh, printed in Dubai. And all the evidence, frankly, suggests that it was not because it was cheaper in Dubai on the contrary, it was perhaps even more than twice as much compared to uh, the company that used to print them in South Africa. Of course, the government talks about, uh, or the Electoral Commission talks about how the Dubai company had uh, some special uh, security features of that sort. Uh, but there's no evidence, frankly. 
Well, when I spoke with the, uh, the director of elections in, in Zambia, she was adamant about the security features because she thought that um, the security features are key to the integrity of the election. Failure to do that, they said, could undermine the integrity of the election, which could further erode confidence that Zambian voters had in the system, and that is why they had to take it far away. Now, provisions they made, she said, were that all political party representatives would be present at the printing of the ballot papers. However, the key um, criticism was that the representatives were not on the plane when the ballot papers were transported from Dubai to Lusaka, Zambia. And that is what the opposition said could be used you know, to switch things here and there to favor the ruling party, which the ruling party denies, of course. I think that uh, I, I would probably, uh, frankly, be remiss if I did not extend uh, our Straight Talk Africa birthday congratulations to Zambia's founding president, Dr. David Kenneth Kaunda. This is a man, by the way, who, frankly, uh, played a very, very significant role at the inception of this program, which has actually been on air for almost 17 years. I remember one time when he was at Boston University, uh, when he was uh, on a fellowship there, he came here, he was in the studio, and one of your former presidents, uh, Flight Lieutenant uh, John Jerry Rawlings, retired but not tired, Absolutely. was also in VOA studios, in London, they had the program. It was a great program, at least when I heard from people who watched the program. And therefore, we have to frankly say that, uh, you know, he deserves a lot. And if man is now 93, his other P, of course, is a Zimbabwean president, a neighboring person, huh? mm -hmm. Robert Gabriel Mugabe. Well, your reaction? about your founding president? Ah, uh, about his birthday or his whole being? Your being. <laughs> I think he was, he, he's a great man. He made his mistakes, which he, you know, publicly accepted. He's, he, he acknowledged the mistakes he had made and how he could have done things better. I remember speaking with him um, some years ago when he was in Boston. He mm -hmm. had come to yes. Cornell. And we spoke, and one of the things he said, it's. He, it's very difficult to know what's going on around you when you're in the state house. People don't tell you the truth. So you take what people tell you as the gospel truth. You don't know that people are suffering as much as they are because the people around you are telling you everything is okay. So you go according to what people tell you. So, I mean, he, he acknowledged the, the, his faults. He's human. He made um, some mistakes. But I think... I miss the old Zambia. Actually, I also learned a bit from him uh, saying, I am profoundly honored and exceedingly humbled to have the opportunity to interact with you. Mm -hmm. Such was the man. Yeah. yeah. I was surprised when he told me, he asked me where I was from. When I told him, he said, I'm proud to be a protege uh -huh. of Nkrumah. Well, you got it. On that note, Thanks to our distinguished guests, Clarissa Mwampa Kayosa, my colleague Peter Kelote, Father Frank Boaria, and to Dr. Sishua, Sishua, who joined us via telephone link up from the Zambian capital, Lusaka. Thanks to our affiliate stations, along with our viewers and listeners, we thank you for tuning in. For many of our Voice of America radio affiliates, learning English is coming up next. And tomorrow morning, it's Daybreak Africa with James Bate. On behalf of the Voice of America, thanks for tuning in to Straight Talk Africa. In the meantime, get better, not beat.